Hello everybody and welcome to Behringer and the theme of today is the highway code is your friend and it's a bit of a how to tutorial on a road markings and how I'm doing mine so I thought I'd sort of inform you and if any of you fancy taking a bit of a plunge then feel free to go ahead now yesterday I showed you this little road marking on my layout update and I wanted to sort of take you through, through the process that I've been working upon um, to to do it now as you, I don't know if you can see it I've got some markings on my chalkboard and this is how you get it um, this is how I, do, how I do it. Now chalkboard paint is very easy to write on and to draw on. Um, forgive, you, forgive me if you can hear any outside noise, it's a dog barking. Um, and basically what I, what I do is I draw the outline here and on here as you can see and then what I will do is I will go over it in paint to create this effect and this is the first attempt that I've done at the zebra crossing and doing some road markings so if I just zoom out you will see um, what I've done it's not a huge amount so far but this is sort of how I've done it and I think if you kind of look down the road it's quite effective um, I've already started making some more road signs here and there's also a giveaway line here. It's all done in pencil on the chalkboard. So it's very easy to go on there. And if you make any mistakes or anything like that, it's really not a problem. What you do is you go over it with your chalkboard paint and use it as an eraser and just repaint the lot if you want to. Or to tidy up the lines, which is what I've done on here. Um, I've used the black chalkboard paint to tidy up some of the lines. And um, it makes it look very neat and tidy and how it should be really um, and that's the great thing about chalkboard paint not only can you just draw on it and, and sort of do the Murray markings without any problems it also um, gives an, a nice general weathering anyway without really doing much to it because it's just leaves these nice little marks on it so the highway code is what I've used for not only road signs which you've seen but also for these road markings so I'm just going to drop you down to my computer to now you're on my computer and um, as you can see this is my desktop here my class 50 well of a class 50 not my class 50 uh, it's a domitable 50026 and here is just a random image that I've picked up through Google images just go onto Google hit the subtitle images and pick out a random picture and this is how I, I do some of the research to see um, the road markings. I know it might seem a bit sad, but it does create an authentic kind of look at it. And I want to try and get it right. The other thing I have been using, um, if I show you, is my highway code book. And this is, if you remember, my highway code book that I got from the 99p store for exactly 99p. So, not only have I used my highway code for the um, road signs um, at the back, um, which I will show you just in just a jiffy if I can find them, which are all these things here which I've used, well, which I'm going to be using and reprinting. I've already used some already. But I'm also using it for stuff like, um, for the road markings and junctions. When you start looking at these pictures like that and you're kind of looking at it, and then after you basically try and recreate that on the layout or whatever crossing you want to recreate so this is also used not only for the highway code symbols but it's always used for reference material so I'm finding this extremely useful so it's well worth the 99p that I paid for it and like I said if you go and use Google Images um, you can also find plenty of images on Google Images as reference also and hopefully end up with something very similar to this that hopefully is relatively authentic so this is only just the beginnings like I said I've got the whole lot to do obviously the bus station as you've seen 
is authentic in the sense of it's pretty much what I see when I'm on my travels on my bus and this is how I see my bus stations and basically it's trying to transfer those images that are in my head and recreate them onto the road. Now this bit of road where my RCL here is um, is a bit wide so I was half thinking I might actually have a little cycle lane down the side I haven't quite decided yet um, I'm, I was going to have the taxi rank along here but it's now I don't feel it's going to be possible to do that and if I show you why you will see why and um, basically the, wide, the, the road if I get my two largest vehicles which is always a good measure get your two largest vehicles that you're hoping to use in your layout and see the spacing and there isn't really much room to put a taxi rank down on one side so I'm going to be putting that either along here in there or um, on this side here of the station so that's what I'm going to be doing that's the new plan with the taxi rank um, so I hope some of this has been of some use to you and if it hasn't then obviously you can bin it um, but this is how I'm planning on doing it my road signs I mean I know you could probably buy road signs but I kind of like using my imagination to try and recreate this by hand and then having that satisfaction that it is actually done and also with it being painted I know that it's not going to be raised and get lifted off because it's not stuck down properly or anything or it's going to have creases in it so this way I prefer it so anyway thanks for watching feel free to comment and subscribe and I hope you found this um, useful so from Beringer, the bus station and the train station and judging by my phone, um, a very good afternoon and bye for now.